What's going on, everybody? My name is Aaron, and I know it's been a couple of weeks since my last upload, but I got pretty sick, and I had to be on some antibiotics and stuff, and I even still have the, the flamp, and <clears throat> as you can hear, uh, still kind of fighting it off, but we're going to we're gonna fight through this video because I need to upload something. But today's video, we are looking at the farewell to life on Earth hypothesis theory. Um, it's a bit of a theory on how it will happen, but it will absolutely happen. At some point in the future, there will no longer be life on Earth. The Earth itself or the sun will no longer allow for life as we know it to exist on planet Earth. Now, we're pretty far from this, um, but I think it's a really cool uh, kind of a way to appreciate what we have now because life is literally so perfectly balanced to allow us to exist as we are right now. Um, everything that we know only exists because everything allows for it. So I think it's really cool. And I think maybe we can appreciate things a little bit better. I know for sure I need this reminder every now and then, but let's get into this video. Life has existed on Earth for three and a half billion years, at least as far as we know. Um, but the planet is not eternal. It won't be able to house living creatures on it forever. There have already been five mass extinctions on Earth that we know of that have nearly wiped its its slate completely clean. Um, the Permian Triassic extinction killed over 90 percent of all species. Another one is the dinosaurs vanished from the Chicxulub asteroid impact in the Gulf of Mexico. But with each time we get a little bit closer to complete extinction, not just us, but the planet itself. Scientists estimate that the biosphere actually only really has maybe one to two billion years left um, where eventually carbon dioxide levels will fall too low to allow for photosynthesis and without plants any plant eating animals and organisms will then die and anything that eats them will starve and eventually us a uh, one billion years that puts us around 13 million human lifetimes so 13 million of your offspring will be able to come and go before the earth eventually does die out. So that is a long time to evolve with the changes. And we're going to have to be doing this, you know, starting now, starting tomorrow, starting next week. Like we're constantly changing with the world. And I don't even know if we'll even look like humans, you know, 13 million lifetimes from now. But, you know, our distant relatives will probably not even be living on earth or will be living on many other planets by the time earth is no longer inhabitable so there's something kind of sad about that it's like yeah we're just gonna watch it die but maybe we'll survive as a species somewhere else it's kind of it's kind of sad to think eventually it's all not going to exist anymore but that's a long time for us to live here and enjoy things i mean none of us are gonna have to worry about that so right <laughs> knock on wood our greatest gift of life ever is also our executioner the sun is gradually getting hotter in 500 million years earth will become too warm for complex life as we know it to exist oceans will eventually evaporate and the water vapor will act as greenhouse gases accelerating the heating that occurs on the earth even further earth becomes a steam covered wasteland essentially well after life on earth is gone about five billion years estimated from now the sun will swell so large that it becomes a red giant consuming mercury venus and possibly even the earth as well even if our planet survives physically it'll be it'll be a floating piece of charcoal <laughs> it'll be absolutely uninhabitable to even the most enduring little microorganisms it, it's gonna be <laughs> an absolute wasteland now even now we're pretty close to extinction um anything could really happen another asteroid could come in and wipe out 90 percent of life on earth and i think i i'm gonna be real honest i don't know if humans are as resilient as the dinosaurs were so i don't know if we would bounce back as well i mean there's there's so many different zombie monster movies where people start clans and groups and everything the few survivors and they go to war with each other it's gonna be it's gonna be absolute chaos everybody's gonna be fighting over cans of beans and whatever else managed to survive whoever is left is gonna wipe each other out <laughs> i'll think a lot faster than the rest of the environment will um i mean i don't know humans have bounced back from a lot more the younger dryas for example um we managed to survive that and not only that we built monoliths and 
crazy monuments and temples and we learned to farm and build and all this all over again. So who knows? Maybe we maybe we will bounce back from it. But uh, some examples of, you know, impending doom, uh, a single beam from a distant star could sterilize the planet, tearing through the ozone layer and triggering a mass extinction. We wouldn't even notice that coming. Uh, it'd be too quick. Uh, asteroids and, you know, comets and whatever else fly by Earth daily. Sometimes they get pretty close. Sometimes they're not too close. Uh, Roughly an asteroid the size of a city block comes by kind of on average every 10,000 years. So that would be enough to wipe out a lot of life, a lot of existence. So uh, just like the dinosaurs never saw it coming. Well, I guess maybe for a few minutes, but uh, we would only have moments to react and there's nothing we would be able to do. So who knows? Live, live every day like an asteroid could take it away. <laughs> uh, rogue planets and black holes are another crazy way that life could end. Now, they're invisible and undetectable. Maybe a planet we would probably be able to detect, but a black hole, I don't know. I don't know if we'd be able to detect that. It could just pop up. A little wormhole could just pop up somewhere above us, and whatever happens with wormholes could happen to us. We could get sucked through and made into spaghetti. I used to, when I was a kid, when I, I was like a kid kid, but I was learning about planets and stuff, and like, we all learn about space like on a horizontal plane, right? But what's what's to say space isn't like this with the planets lined up vertically? And that's kind of what I thought of as a kid, because in, in outer space, there is no real up and down, right? It's just a black void. And then we're in it. And again, we, we learn about planets like this traveling in a orbit that moves horizontally. But what if it was vertical? And my fear as a kid was that a planet would pop out of orbit and go you know crush earth from above and i remember i vividly remember standing at our back door like looking out and i was expecting like mars to come just out of nowhere and just appear in the sky and crush earth and i was horrified about it and i, I don't know if i just eventually forgot or i got my facts straight or something but you know, I, I learned that our, our orbits aren't really going to allow that but you know another galaxy passing by us might do it because that's one thing you don't think about too like like our solar system is moving through space as well. Like it's not just us spinning around the sun and then all the other planets spinning around the sun. Like all of those are spinning. And then that whole conglomerate is also flying through space at like thousands of miles an hour. What's to say eventually we don't collide with another passing galaxy or whatever solar system. We're, we're flying through space at a vast speed right now. You can't feel it. But we're flying, man. Our most tragic farewell may actually be the one we give ourselves. And I don't know whether you believe in climate change or not. It doesn't really matter. Climate is changing. Uh, whether you think our contribution to it matters much or not, the climate changes. It's always changing. Throughout history, it changes. So your definition of it, whatever that might mean to you, climate change happens. It's real. Uh, and science shows that we are speeding that process up. We don't know of any other species on our Earth that has been as advanced as us. Maybe there were. There's tons of theories about that, too. But as far as we know right now that we can prove we're the most advanced you know, species that's ever existed on the Earth. And it makes a dent. You know, our, our technological advances have aged the planet and we're warming it faster and faster each year. If left unchecked, Scientists believe that we could actually make the Earth uninhabitable in mere centuries rather than in billions of years. So the planet might still exist for a long time. It might just shed us like ticks, though, and it'll just be a ball left to whatever animals can evolve to our destruction. It's pretty. It's, it's, I know I'm smiling, but it's sad. It really is sad. Uh, nuclear annihilation as well. Nine nations hold the power to end civilization as we know it. It would only take a few hours to erase cities, ecosystems, and then history in probably, and this literally ties into the next chapter, but AI as well. AI will eventually be in charge, likely, of controlling armies and wars and all this. And if AI thinks there's a risk of war, it might push the button itself and end it for us. Um, and again, that's the next part of this is uh, biotech and AI. Uh, pandemics engineered or accidental 2020 you remember that uh, uncontrolled artificial intelligence self-replicating nanotech these are all some examples of crazy apocalypses uh we have tons of science fiction about it but what's to say that's not real i mean there's some fact in all of this ai exists nanotech is real 
There's all kinds of crazy shit out there that we don't even know about. Chat GPT 4.0, that's not even the craziest available. That's just what we get access to. So what happens when life ends on Earth? Not just our life, but all life. Every tree, microbe, trace of sentience. If Earth dies and no one is left to remember it, does it even mean anything? Or is that meaning only a construct to possible observers? Maybe otherworldly, maybe other dimensional? It will only take a couple thousand years for our existence to be completely unnoticeable. If, if we disappear a couple thousand years later, someone comes and visits Earth, they won't even know we were ever here. The only way they would really know is with, you know, maybe nuclear reactors or if they see processes of our nuclear energy that last for millions of years, possibly. That would really be the only way that they would know something was here. In the future, it would only take a little bit for our buildings and cars and everything that we have to just turn to literal dust. There would be no stories, no no writings about us, no nothing. Like You would never know we were here. Everything we've experienced will just not exist to anyone. We're, we're very small in the vast expanse of things. The anthropic illusion is the idea that life wasn't the goal of the universe, but an accidental byproduct of it. So. The universe exists, and it just so happened to be so perfect that life existed. We just were meant to flicker in and fade out, and wasn't really the intention of the universe. It's a kind of a cool theory that we were, not just we as humans, but everything, life, is just an accident. Everything was just so perfect that we happened to be here. Now, one small hope that we will be known about after we're gone is we send signals and probes and whatever else out into space, those signals could be picked up hundreds, thousands of years from now. Maybe whatever life receives it will be able to find where it came from and understand maybe a little bit about us, whether we're back here or still at home or not. It's kind of cool to think about. Maybe those signals out there will kind of give a clue that we were here. Maybe something already has. Who knows? Maybe they just haven't responded yet. And then for some, there is the spiritual uh, interpretations to the end of life. So we might not exist here on earth anymore but for some our souls will move on and live forever for eternity somewhere else astral plane different dimension whatever that is to you i was raised hearing about you know heaven and that forever and ever and ever we'll live there and life here was just basically a trial to determine where we go after we die and it still holds some core value to me even though i'm more agno agnostic now but there's definitely that interpretation that just because life ends here doesn't mean it's completely over. This is just part of it. And we go on elsewhere. I don't know. That's kind of cool. I think that's uh, I think that's why a lot of people turn to religion. It kind of gives us it gives us an end when we don't really know what the end looks like. Digital immortality. Some envision uploading our consciousness to computers, the Internet, whatever. Uh, and freeing ourselves from the planet physically. If that happens, are we even still alive though, or are we just something else entirely? Maybe, just maybe, nothing comes after. No upload, no escape, just silence. Just the planet finally able to breathe, kind of peaceful, if you think about it. If we're just, it's gone, the Earth can do whatever it's gonna do. It's not sped up, it's not slowed down, it just, changes. So what do we do with this knowledge? Do we despair? Do we fight? Or do we cherish? Maybe the farewell to life on Earth is not something to fear, but something to prepare for. To face with eyes wide open, hearts full, and hands ready to shape the time that we have left. Because the beauty of life is not in its length, but in its existence. Maybe the universe is not asking us to last forever, but to shine brightly, briefly, and beautifully before the stars take us home. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it if you enjoyed this video, uh, and I hope you did. It's not meant to be scary. It's a little scary. The topic is wild, uh, but just appreciate the time you have here because it's very, very short. Again, if you like this video, please subscribe. Be nice to each other. Say thank you to Alexa. Drink water, be safe, and I'll see you in the next video.